A D S R Pro Hello and welcome back to ADSR Pro with me, Mike Smith. Today we're going to look at the different versions of Steinberg Cubase, that's Cubase Elements, Cubase Artist and Cubase Pro. I'm basically going to give you a quick overview of each version and roughly what it does, um, the differences between all three. And I've got a PDF available for download which I'll give you a link in my description below and also I'll give you the link to the Steinberg website where you can find this information as well. So let's get started. Cubase Elements is ideal for the home recordist, bands, singer-songwriters and creative musicians. Cubase Artist, seasoned musicians, product studio owners and bands, Cubase Pro, professional producers, mixing engineers and composers. Now this is just I would say a rough overview. Um, there's nothing stopping you using uh, Cubase Elements to be really, really creative and get a great deal of stuff down. For me, it has enough items in there for it to be a really, really useful piece of software and also as an entry level point, it's got everything you would need to get started. Most importantly of all, as you can see, each version has a 64-bit floating point audio engine with up to 192 kilohertz recording. So even though you're buying the, the basic entry-level version, it still gives you that full high-definition audio engine. It also allows 24 physical inputs and outputs for Cubase elements. To be fair, that's more than enough for any, any person to get started. Any more than that. And to be fair, I don't think you'd use more than that um, as a you know, as a beginner into the world of, of music production. You can also record and mix up to 48 audio and 64 MIDI tracks within Cubase Elements. Now, there's nothing stopping you if you're running out of audio tracks, for instance, uh, bouncing down a load of drums. Let's say you've got 10 different elements all on individual audio tracks. Uh, what you could do is bounce them down into one stereo file and free up a load of audio tracks and you can keep going. I mean, let's face it, this is how we used to do it in the old days with even four track recorders. So, you know, you just keep bouncing them down onto one track and freeing up. You've also got 24 instrument tracks and 16 VST instrument slots. So if you could imagine if you were running all of these, that would be quite a big project anyway. So Elements does give you the option to be a fully fledged door uh, with, you know, qualities there. Uh, the amount of information you can have in your project is there. So, you know, even though it's a cut down version, it's not stopping you from uh, being creative and being able to achieve exactly what you want. So with regards to mixing, as you can see um, in the mix console, each version has an integrated channel strip. They've all got full drag and drop support. Now the difference here with elements is you only have eight insert slots for VST effects. Well, in Cubase 8.5 or, or 9, um, that was the first version to allow 16 insert slots. So in all honesty, 8 insert slots is more than enough. Um, if you're using more than 8 inserts anyway, I would suggest that you know the sound's wrong in the first place if you're trying to uh, change it that much that you have to use 8 inserts. Um, you've got an A and B comparison and global bypass, plug-in search function, total scalability, channel visibility management, quick link system and customizable view sets. Now the thing here with Artist is you've got this sidechain inputs. This is a relatively new feature of Cubase 9, 9.5 um, and it allows you to sidechain uh, retrolog and, and different things. Um, I'm guessing sidechain inputs on this version also um, means on the compressor. It probably won't have a sidechain input on elements. Yeah, it's not a big deal, to be fair. Um, it's nice to have it within Cubase. Uh, I use it quite a lot. However, there is also third-party things out there if you were doing side chaining. So it's not the end of the world. Uh, with Cubase Pro, you also get VCA faders for complex mixing and mastering. Um, input tracks from projects, um, relatively new feature. What this allows me to do is... If I have a, an old track and I've got a bass line in there that I like, I can instantly import that uh, into my working project. Uh, really, really nice, handy feature. Um, with regards to group channels, Cubase Elements has 16 group channels, 32 in Artist and 256 in Pro. 
Now, I make electronic music, and in all honesty, I never use more than 16 group channels. So that, for me, is feature-rich. You know, you've, you've got everything you would need. Obviously, if you're doing uh, more complex mixes and maybe film score and, and so on, you'd probably need a, a lot more group channels. However, to get you started and into the world of Cubase, 16 group channels is more than enough. You also don't have the control room or 5.1 surround support. Now, control room is a really, really useful feature that allows you to have um, multiple monitoring setups. Um, if you've got maybe a few different sets of speakers, you can switch between them. And also 5.1 support, again, for me, unless you're doing film score, that probably really isn't that relevant. Still within mixing, um, with artist and element, you don't have mix convert powerful automation system or direct offline processing. Now in Cubase Pro, um, what I can do is I can have a piece of audio and I can process it directly. Um, let's say I can add a delay and reverb to it and process it there and then. Obviously you don't have that option within Artist and Elements. You've also got powerful automation with four modes, dedicated control panel and Virgin Territories mode. Um, automation is a really, really important feature, certainly for me. Um, so to not have that in elements doesn't mean it's uh, completely useless at all, far from it. It just means you don't have the, the powerful automation side of the full-blown Cubase Pro. Composition. Now, this is where I think elements comes into its own because even though it's the entry-level DAW from Steinberg, it comes fully equipped with a sampler track, key and drum editor, basic music notation and chord pads which is an absolutely amazing feature so it allows even the novice musician to be able to string together really complex chord progressions and give you inspiration to write you know the music that you really want to get out of your head so and sampler track obviously a new feature within cubase um stunning to have that in the the entry level version with artist it you've got enhanced chord pads uh, which allows you know a little bit more creativity, uh, full instrument expression, and different track versions. Uh, again, track versions allows you to create uh, different variations on a theme, so you can kind of remix on the fly and and help get you know some inspiration. Recording and editing in Elements, you've got basic audio editing tool set, real time stretching, and pitch shifting in playback only. Obviously, uh, Artist uh, is a little bit more complex where you've got lanes and comping and dedicated punch-in points. Uh, with Cubase Pro, you've also got track edit groups and vary audio. Um, obviously, the different algorithms for time stretching in Cubase Pro are really, really useful um, because depending on the material you're using um, determines which algorithm you'd use. And also, you've got this nice intuitive time warp. So yes, Cubase Pro obviously has a few more features, uh, as does Artist, but again, for me, this doesn't stop you being creative and getting to where you need to be if you're new to creating music within a DAW environment. And last but not least, we have the workflow. Um, Media Bay, Project Assistant, uh, supports all common files, FLAC, MP3, SoundCloud export, 30 minutes of HD video tutorials on YouTube, in all fairness, there's channels like mine which have hours and hours worth of free good content anyway, so that kind of cancels itself out. Offline process history, track visibility, rendering place and VST transit with artist. Rendering place, again, is a feature now that I use it, I couldn't live without. Again, it quickly allows me to select a piece of audio, render it to a new audio file, and I can choose whether it's got effects on it or whether it's just a clean signal. Again, it's just a quick way of getting to where you need to be. Again, you can still do all this kind of in elements, but you just have to use a different workaround to get to the same point, that's all. Uh, what have you got here? VST Transit, which is cloud co collaboration service. Again, a great place to be able to uh, store your projects or work with other people and you can swap files between each other. Uh, not really used it that much. Um, it is useful. Uh, and I think that's about it. So if you do like what I do, please do subscribe to my channel. And as I stated previously, all this information is available below. So please check the links. And until next time, bye-bye. A. 
D S R Pro.